What would you do if you were stuck in a place, in one place, and every day was exactly the same and nothing you did mattered? Does it sound like 2020? <laughs> right? How, and um, I really am grateful that so many people, I, it seems like everyone who shared before, uh, before this talk, it, you're all talking about what I'm getting out of um, this talk this morning. Um, it is our annual talk on Groundhog Day. Today's the day. So February 2nd, that's Tuesday, is Groundhog Day. I think we're in for a big snowstorm. So maybe the groundhog will not see a shadow and we'll have an early spring because that groundhog is afraid of his shadow. So number one lesson is the groundhog is afraid of the light that lets him see his shadow side. And he buries right back down into the hole. And so we all may have had that experience when we get a good view of our beliefs, our consciousness, when we get a good view of what's going on with us by seeing what's getting created out of us, we scurry back in and go into denial or it didn't happen, I don't want to see it, or just get distracted, or we move, or we go somewhere else on the planet, or... Um, or blame. It's, it's my shadow's fault. It's got nothing to do with me, right? So we don't want to be a groundhog. We don't want to be afraid of seeing our consciousness outpictured in our world. We want to see what we've created. And one way that apparently works is by being held in place and forced to take a look at yourself. The one disadvantage of having complete freedom moving around on the planet is those of us who want to run away from ourselves have a lot of room to run away. But for me, this past year, I found there was no way, there, there's no place to go. And I moaned, well, I don't get to do this, I don't get to do that. And, and, the, and the, a part of me was thinking, well, did you really want to do those things or was that just a, you know, an easy habit that you developed of running away from myself, not taking a look at myself? And so taking a look at myself, taking a look at yourself is what it's really all about. We tend to think that we're changing because the world around us is changing, but that's not the truth. And so we have this marvelous movie created by um, Harold Ramis, director and um, uh, part writer of it. Uh, Danny, I didn't write Danny's last name. He was the originator of the story. And it, the, the, the story, the movie is called Groundhog Day. And Harold Ramis has said that since that movie was produced and shown out there in the world, he has received a communication from people in every single religion. Every single religion. Buddhist, fundamentalist, Judah, Jewish, everyone saying this expresses our philosophy of life completely. You must be one of us. Wow. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. There's been theses written on this movie. And um, even non-religious people, that might be us, right, have said, this is what we're about. Look at me. I'm saying Groundhog Day is our high holy day of obligation. It's our <laughs> sacred, there are no other holidays for us. This is it. This is our sacred holiday, Groundhog Day. And the question is, will we graduate from Groundhog Day to February 3rd, the next day? It's the test. Now, maybe last year, we did not pass that test. Maybe <laughs> we got stuck. So the movie is about Bill Murray, uh, named Phil, the weatherman, and the groundhog, 
in Punxsutawney is also named Phil. Okay. Full of what is a question you can contemplate. Uh, but Phil, who likes to predict the weather, he likes to predict the future, hates his life, hates himself, hates going back to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania for the fourth time to cover the groundhog, hates the groundhog, hates everything about his life. He is completely hating. He covers it up with uh, bad humor and sarcasm. And he has a new producer named Rita. And when he looks at her, you can see something in him wants something more. And he sees it in her. So he goes to Punxsutawney. He does the Groundhog Day thing, hating every moment of it, wanting to end it as soon as possible, turns in early just to, you know, let me wake up and get out of here as fast as possible. And the problem is... He doesn't wake up to the next day. He wakes up to the same day over and over again. And like we did, right? When lockdown happened and everything, we raged about it. We were angry about it. Uh, we got into, we, I certainly went into depression at a certain point and we had to face that this is our new outer reality. So what am I going to do with myself? And he finally reaches a point um, where he starts deciding to make the best of it with the consciousness he has, which is, let me manipulate it. Let me do everything I sneakily can because I can be omniscient. I can, I can find out what I need to know one day and then use it in my favor the next day. You know, he robs a bank by doing this, you know, um, he seduces a, a particular woman by doing that. And, um, and every day though, he wakes up and Rita is there. A reminder of all that his heart desires to be. According to the creators of this, Rita represents excellence. I like to think of her as representing being your best self. And that's what she strives for. And this standard of excellence will not tolerate anything less. And so Bill, you know, just thinks it's all about, you know, having sex with her. And so he spends a couple of years, it sounds like, um, arranging this perfect day of manipulating her so that at the end she will sleep with him. And it's not possible. It's not possible to be, embody excellence with anything less and with, with habits and with actions that are anything less than excellence themselves. So it's, it's absolutely impossible. And, and yet, don't we all want it? We all want a consciousness of love. We want to love and be loved and all that, but we don't want to actually go through the experience of having the love. Um, we don't want to love all the things that we don't think deserve our love. But you can't attain the prize of a consciousness of love and being loved by being unloving. And so Bill learns this, and because he doesn't know anything else to do, he gets depressed, and then we have a lovely series of him trying to kill himself, you know, every imaginable way. And, you know, no matter what he does, he wakes up the next morning. Can you imagine? Which actually, you know, so, you know, don't bother attempting suicide. As I, as I share with people, don't bother. You are going to wake up with yourself, and you're going to have to deal with it. And... Um, and so after he's tried everything he can do with his old consciousness, everything, because he's had a lot of time, he finally surrenders to the excellence that is Rita. And he asks her for help as a friend. And she 
spends the day with him and, and he shares his heart. He shares everything that he's going on. She really is listening. She's really trying to understand it. And at the end of that day, she says, you know what? Maybe this isn't a curse. Maybe it's a blessing. You get to live forever. What are you going to do with it? And he never thought of that before. What do you do with eternity? It's an important question because that is what we have. And again, we've got this illusion of only so much time, and yet we waste it as if we thought we were eternal. We waste it in our limited belief about ourselves. And the paradox is, because we are infinite eternal beings, every moment is precious. That's something to think about. Anyway, so he surrenders to the highest in himself, to that Rita consciousness within him. And he starts exploring himself. And what does his heart really desire to do? And, and we have wonderful sequences of him learning to ice sculpt and play the piano and do all these things that just interest him and he starts to grow. And so as we look back at our at our 2020, we want to ask ourselves, you know, did I continue to discover aspects of myself and continue to grow? without all the distractions of roaming around on the planet, just facing yourself, infinite possibilities yet to be with infinite time in which to do it. Um, and if you haven't done it, that's okay. Will you do it today? Because it's today is the only day that matters. And with all of Phil's growing, he learns to make the most of his day. Harold Ramis says um, he tried to bend his reality to shape it around Rita so that she would fall in love with him, but it just wasn't possible. So he's got to love himself. And he's got to make the world that he wants it to be so that he can love himself. They say she, Rita, is wedded to excellence, and wooing her is wooing excellence. And when we fall short, when he fell short, <laughs> she, I love the sequence, slap, 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 slap. <laughs> Snap out of it. Stop it. I'm not putting up with that, right? And so we do want to, you know, stop. There's not a word of truth in it. I believe only in this eternal, infinite good. For it is written, good and more good is mine by Ernest Holmes. And so we wake ourselves up with that slap of, of our divine self waking us up that it exists. Stop our nonsense. Stop our toleration of ourselves behaving anything less than who we truly are. And so the interesting thing about Phil and his development, he didn't become a perfect person. He still had his flaws and idiosyncrasies, but he began a life of every moment striving to make the best choices, to be his best self. And so it's not excellence is not about being perfect and excellence is not about other people thinking you're perfect because he did what he did because he was honoring himself regardless of what the reaction was and we've got this uh, what other wonderful scene where you know every day at a certain time he rushes to this tree where this little kid's climbing it and falls out and without him there he breaks something but <laughs> You know, Phil catches him and the kid squirms away. And Phil says, you never thank me. You never thank me. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> so to honor yourself, it's not about what that reaction is. 
and it's pleasing. He's pleased by the reaction of the whole town around him. In fact, um, as he keeps expressing his true self and honoring himself, more and more people are falling in love with him. Instantaneous love. But he's not doing it in order to get their love. He is doing it because that's what he loves about himself. And so he grows in this approach to living his life so that he reaches a moment where every moment of the day, he makes the best choice that he can imagine. And yet it's all fresh and new for him. He's not making the same choices that he made yesterday over, uh, over and over and over again. When he, when he catches that little boy, he says, you never thank me. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. Because he realizes that every day is a brand new, fresh experience. Even though it's, it's exactly the same, he's different. So in the same stuck day, Phil becomes a fresh new being living each one of these days fresh and new and discovers what is there for him and takes advantage of it. Ultimately, he learns to serve. He learns to serve that this is what gives him joy. He serves himself. He continues practicing the piano and, you know, do his ice sculpturing and who knows all what else. But who he is, is helping other people in a way that he can help. And he loves helping people, whether it's changing, you know, some women's tires or, you know, Heimlich maneuver on, you know, some unfortunate, <laughs> you know, he, he's enjoying it for the doing of it. And so what we have in his final day is a world he loves completely because he loves himself completely. This is the same town that he hated 10,000 years earlier. Same exact town. And like Susan's story of the little girl who knitted, right? The whole town was transformed because of him. In one day, everyone he touched was lifted up, was somehow made better, somehow improved, somehow blessed. It was a town of his own making. It became his creation created out of loving and being true to himself. And in this consciousness, we see Rita, the standard of excellence, go, hello there. You know, <laughs> he doesn't seek her. Divine love brings together and maintains together those who belong together so the glory of God may be manifest. He does not seek her at all, but he loves her. And she is attracted to this consciousness that she is seeing for the first time. And she wants him. And so in the final uh, social event, um, they have a bachelor auction and they drag Phil up to auction him off. And a couple of the women are all trying to buy him because they see his value. But they're limited and they cannot have him because he's the standard of excellence. And Rita declares every penny in her bank, every penny that she has to buy him. She gives all that she has. And that's what we right? On a spiritual life. At some point we declare, I lay down my life for you. And we will give everything we have, everything we own to receive 
that greater good, that truth, that, that fulfillment of that something within. You know, and so she's like $337.83 or whatever it is, every penny in her account. He's worth it to her, the pearl of great price. So excellence sees excellence, and they have a wonderful evening together, and she stays. And he wakes up. Actually, I think it hap the change happens in the day, that we make our tomorrow in that day, because in that very little romantic scene that they have at the end where he just says how much he loves her, and you know, no matter what happens, he'll love her you know, forever. Well he's, well, he's declaring his heart this time, rather than his phony covered up self, it starts to snow and he notices it. It's different. And so that's when I think, my interpretation, that the shift happens, that he has expressed his heart fully, filled. He, has com he is completely filled with the consciousness of love. So the inner and the outer, the town, everything transformed by love, and this sweet little snow starts coming down. And he wakes up, and it's February 3rd, and he is a changed man. Because what he says to Rita, who's there, um, what can I do for you today? He's still a man of service, of love. And as they leave the little bed and breakfast and go outside, he's like, let's move here. Let's live here. And they say um, that Bill Murray uh, ad-libbed the line after that, we'll rent to start. <laughs> <laughs> that was not in the script, so they say. But, but see, that is this consciousness of that loving presence that is living each day fresh and new, regardless of anything, that can say, well, who knows? Maybe I'll be here to help you tomorrow. Maybe. We'll rent, because <laughs> who knows? Anything can happen. When we wake to the new day, it's a whole new world. And that's what we're striving to earn here. That's the, that, that's the divine purpose of all that's going on in this world keeping us in place. I, I'm making this up. Um, but according to me, the divine reason why all this world situation got created is to hold those of us who want to seek the truth and become more, to hold us in place until we outgrow the place we are in. And then our world becomes larger. I, uh, there's nothing mm. better than demonstrating because you have outgrown the good that is in your current circumstances. We all want a better job. We want a better whatever, this, whatever. And we think moving around will do it to us. But Ernest Holmes in the Science of Mind textbook has this great little statement uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but that the, the most satisfying demonstration to make is to stay right where we are and by spiritual work alone be lifted up out of the conditions we are in and gently placed in a whole new situation. And I've had that type of demonstration. It's really cool. If you haven't done it, go for it. But it requires, I mean, it's the, you know, Phil uh, consciousness. It's like, I am going to sit here and work on myself and listen to that divine wisdom guiding me. And I will not raise a finger to fix my situation, to change my situation. I will not raise a finger to be loved. I will not raise a finger to get a better job. I am going to do all my work in consciousness and as that consciousness shifts, I will know it because I will be lifted up out of the circumstances and placed into a whole new situation. It can happen. 
and to leave something because you've outgrown it, not because you're tired and bored or unsuccessful at it. To stay right where you are going, okay, this is me. This is my shadow. It ain't pretty and it's scary. And I'm going to stay here. Unlike the groundhog, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to look at it until I see it for what it really is. To I see myself for who I really am. Until I make peace with it. Until I learn everything that there is to learn in seeing this particular shadow. To, to make that commitment in consciousness. And then, right, expect the best and allow the creative process to silently clear away the debris of a disordered life. Follow your heart, right? That's what he did. Instead of shutting it down and ignoring it and pushing it all away. And so um, Harold Ramis said, Rita is the one who shows us that he has become the kind of person that he wanted to be. And the greatest gift for him was becoming finite again. He's going to die, he's going to age, and time is going to go on, but now he has the keys to use his time well. He made the most of all the time that was given him in that one day and graduated to more days. But appreciate, appreciating each moment infinitely deep in us rather than infinite moments. Right? Whew. Um, Reverend Lloyd Strom defined youth as unchanging newness. There's a paradox for you. But to be that divine, something that we are true to ourselves, and that unchanges, and yet behold, I make all things new. Whew. This is what's available to us. So, so that's what I got from the movie this year. Harold Ramos, a lot of the people, actors and other people who worked with him said that he's just such a joy working with because he's so nice and kind and happy. And he says at the end of this little documentary I was watching, you can live better. You can have a better life. You can change, and when you do change, you do get those rewards that you think that you want from life. It's his personal philosophy. Sweet, right? We all want that. All right, so Tuesday's the day. Uh, we, uh, we accept. Obviously, last year we didn't do it well. Uh, we could do better. Let's uh, bring a whole new, let's, let's make the most out of this time. We, we can get a head start, right? It's January 31st. We've got two full days before the day uh, to make every moment, every thought count in our, in our own selves and let us discover ourselves waking up to a brand new world on February 3rd. That potential is there for us. <sighs> so let's take a moment now. And Reverend Rich is going to play for us. And while we're, uh, while he's doing that, let's take a good look at our shadows. And uh, maybe come up with a new thought of what we want to do about seeing that shadow. We can't change the shadow. But maybe we need to take a fresh look at it in some way. And then I'll come back and do a spiritual mind treatment. Oh, yeah. Yay, Lord, I, I believe. Help me in my unbelief so that we will get through into another day this year. So let's do that practice now. Mm -hmm. 